Welcome to S Class, the highest tier in podcasting. With me, hailing from a long line of legendary warriors, it's Robert, and I'm your host. Wow, Justin, <laughs> this is outrageous. I just <laughs> actually looked at the thing that you've given us for the first time, our our plethora of anime to choose from, and I can't even let you do your introduction because I'm I'm blown away by our choices here. Okay. Well, I am your host, Justin. I was going to say I am the pouty, dark-haired mage with no social skills. Your host, Justin. <laughs> accurate. <laughs> All of this accurate. So, ordinarily, when Robert and I finish a series together, we like to have a discussion about it, and then we do our final ranking of it. We think we've said enough about how much we love Freerun. I would be giving it an S rank, as would you, right, Robert? Correct. Absolutely. So. With that being said, we thought it'd be much more interesting to, instead of just reiterating that same discussion, we're going to rank Freerun amongst our some of our favorite anime and manga of all time, and see whether it's better or worse than Freerun. These this list of anime. I told Rob we would each be presenting only five. I have thrown twenty anime onto this docket, and this is Rob's first time seeing it. So in this is collectively anime we've both seen as well. Correct. So there might be some. Popular things that people might like, but one of us has not seen it. So we'd like to have a more thorough discussion. I'm gonna I'm gonna list these in order, alphabetically,、um, and then I'm gonna go through the tiers and explain how these rules are gonna work.、Uh, again, this is a podcast episode. This is gonna be audio, but we're also having a, a video on the main channel if you'd like to see a more visual tier list of this. So let me just go ahead and, and list these off while Rob processes all of this. Bakuman, Blue Period. Doctor Stone, Dragon Ball, Girls in Panzer, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusader, Kaiji, Kiki Delivery Service, Kion, Konjiki no Gash Bell, Little Witch Academia, Naruto, Ping Pong, A Place Further Than the Universe, Polar Bear Cafe, Porco Rosso, Shokugeki no Soma, Yotsuba, Your Name, and Yu Yu Hakusho. So we have twenty series. A couple of catches. We have to put ten above. Free run and ten below free run. There is no middle line of saying it's about the same level. The reason why most of these series are here is because they're around that level. So it's going to get spicy. One more rule is that Rob and I each get one veto. So if there's a series that one of us feels very strongly about and we cannot reach a consensus of whether it's better or worse, one of us can say the veto, and that will end the conversation. That person who uses their one veto gets to decide where it goes. <laughs> I can't wait to use the veto and just to piss you off. I, I I think I already have the perfect idea of when to do it, just to get you so agitated, and then you can't even respond. Right? It's over. It's just done. It's it is over. It, it is a little bit of a game of chicken because if you use it at the right place, you can use it as an offensive move or a defensive move. Oh my god, I love that. Wait, can I veto your veto with my no. veto? No,、That's... I guess. I can, can you? We both we both waste <laughs> our veto. Yeah, I'll let you decide that, Robert. Uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> Robert. With all of that being said, I'd like to give you the first overall pick for the question: Is this better than Free Run? Well, I see, you know, for our people watching it, that there's a Gash Belt here as well. So, are we just putting Gash Belt at the top to begin with, and and not even like counting it as one of our series? There's actually okay, so there's actually、uh, four tiers.、I'm, I apologize, I didn't say this. There's the Gash Belt tier. There's the Better Than Free Run tier. The worst than free run tier, and you might not even be able to see this, but it says absolute trash in black writing over a black box. Oh, okay, so that's the Girls Who Panzer tier. There we go. <laughs> Our first cut, Girls Who Panzer, goes in absolute trash. Now there will be nine going in the better than free run, nine worse than free run, and then one in the Gash Belt tier, which of course remains、absolutely. to be seen what that is. Oh, okay, so Gash Belt might not be <laughs> Gash Belt here. Okay, I think. We should have a little po- post mortem for Girls Who Panzer, which I think was a show we watched when we first started、uh, S Class. Like when we first started S Class, we tried to make it so that we we would all watch a show over the course of like a week or two and then talk about it. And Girls Who Panzer ended up being one of the worst things either of us has ever seen. Well, I can say that because I actually watched the whole series. You saw about two <laughs> episodes of it and pretended <laughs> for about like five years. That I wouldn't recognize that you didn't actually watch it, but I noticed during that podcast you got real quiet at certain parts. I was like, "Oh, this motherfucker didn't even suffer with us." I could not do it. I, I could not even <laughs> hank my way through more than two and a half episodes. Very deserving of the absolute trash tier. <laughs> 
I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna throw something on here that's gonna be a tough discussion point. I know where it is in my heart, but it is competitive, and it's Shokugeki no Soma. Oh, okay. Um, you know it. That's a tough one because I know that when I rank things, I don't just rank it as an anime series. I rank it as the experience and holistically what went into watching that anime. And Shokugeki no Soma was an anime we watched together. And we had a lot of fun watching it together with our other buddy John. And there, there's just so many positive experiences that went along with it. And while I absolutely think it's a worse anime than Free Rin, Free Rin was just me watching it every Friday. There there was no, like, real exciting strings attached that I have these everlasting memories that go along with watching Free Run. And I don't know if you agree with that aspect of it, but for me, the overall experience of those first couple of seasons of Shokugeki no Soma would put it better than Free Run. But if we're looking at it as the entire Shokugeki no Soma series, then it, it has to be worse. I, I agree with you. I think that we were a lot younger. You didn't have a kid yet. And we would hang out every week and watch this together. I remember you and John had watched this before I had. And you were just watching in anticipation as I made all the wrong predictions about who was going to make it through the tournament. Um, it's, it's a precious memory. I think the reason, besides the fact that it is just worse uh, than Free Run, given the seasons three through five, is that I see seasons one and two as like the prologue. Like this is building up who Soma is, his relative uh, skill next to his class and them taking on this juggernaut. And that's the climax. I think because it's like, it, the climax is so such a fall off from the prologue. That's why it's worse than free run. It's not really fair because we haven't gotten to the climax of free run. It's almost like it'd be more fair to compare the first two seasons of Soma to the first, to what we've seen of free run so far. Mm -hmm. Which, if we were doing, I would put it better than, but we're looking at Soma as an entire package, so I will put it worse than Free Run. Yeah, I, I'm on the same page. I probably would put it higher if it was just those first two, just from the excitement and the and the energy. But we'll Agreed. put it worse. Okay. It's, it's, it's a tough one, though. I want to start off just to make sure we get the feeling of what we're doing here today. Yeah, no, that, that's a good way to start it off. I'm just, like, perusing the list, and, and I'm, I'm trying to... Th wow, this is going to be real interesting, because... I don't want to, like, dump too much in worse then, because there's, you know, we have to have nine in each, and it's like, I have to really believe that this is better than Free Run and make an argument for it to put it above Free Run. How savage are we being with this, Rob? If it's in a tier, can we move it, or is it stuck there for the for the annals of eternity? No, I, I think it's in there for eternity. This is the decision we are making here. Okay, then I would say we should play it safe and maybe get rid of some things earlier rather than have all the hard discussions and then end up being left with, like, k -On and other things better than Free Run. You know what I'm saying? We might screw ourselves. I might have yeah, yeah. done something bad just now, but it's fine. All right, let's start cooking then. What do you got for me? I think k -On is a good one to put in worse than Free Run. I mean, uh, k -On was my first cute girls doing cute things anime. And I, you know, also have fond memories of watching K-On! with you. But, like, for a show about girls that are supposed to be in a band, they don't actually ever play any music. <laughs> but the one song they do play, I actually really love. And I, I, I feel full, full time. wanting... Exactly, it's fantastic. But I feel wanting more. <laughs> and to be quite honest with you, I don't really love season two of K-On! It feels like it slows down, like, to a substantial crawl. Fucking Azunad. And it's already man. obviously a slow series. It's Azunad. <laughs> the addition of Azunad really, really killed the momentum for me. I, I don't disagree. And I think there's a there's a beautiful irony in that Free Run is a show about everything, and Can is a show about nothing. <laughs> it absolutely is. I love those girls, don't get me wrong, but it is worse than Free Run. Alright, I'm gonna I gotta throw something in better than Free Run. I'm putting you, Hakusho, in better than Free Run. I'm not going to argue against that, I don't think. It's hard. Like, when I was really... I, I tried making a list of my top 100 anime at one point, and I was like, ooh, it's floating right around this area. Looking at this list, and when I was thinking about it myself, because I, I picked Yu Yu Show, I was like, in my heart, I don't think Free Run has surpassed what Yu Yu Show is. Um, those 120 episodes, uh, that experience of my childhood, Free Run isn't there yet. 
No, and once again, the experience, I watched the entire Dark Tournament with our buddy Kevin, and it was like, it was like watching a sporting event. It was like watching the NBA Finals combined with the Super Bowl, and like, <laughs> even though you kind of know our heroes are going to win, like, I was genuinely unsure throughout every single round, and it like, they just did such a good job of making it feel like this competitive life or death tournament you know the fate of all these people are on the line i i i think the dark tournament alone is what puts you haka show above so many other anime dark tournament is legendary and then also the sensui arc which becomes this like noir mystery um against these psychics who aren't strong but have very unique powers against them it it, it just goes in very many different directions i think you haka show is a special it's very special anime agreed no qualms there yet this is tough you know, I want to talk about one that I know is incredibly important to you and one that I just sort of liked, which is Blue Period. I'm contemplating if I'm using the veto now. Right. So for me, it would be worse than Free Red because as much as I liked it, um, you know, it, for me, it was just another seasonal anime, probably my favorite anime of the season I watched when it aired. But... There was not too much more than that. I'm not, like, anxiously awaiting for Season 2 to drop. Um, I'll obviously watch it when it does happen, but, like, something about art and, you know, somebody struggling through their dreams of becoming an artist, that resonates so much more with you, obviously, than me. Yeah, this is definitely a Homer pick, and I think from your perspective, you've only seen 11 episodes. I'm totally caught up on the manga. Um, if I were where you were, I'd probably argue... It's worse than Free Run. I think I'll play my veto card here and put it as better than Free Run. It's a very strategic <laughs> move just to get rid of it. I see what you're doing yes, it, here, Rob. It is exactly what my plan was here, is for you to use your veto before you, uh, I could use mine, and now I can really have some fun here. <laughs> I have a feeling I know who you're going after. Uh, which makes me very unhappy, but uh, you know what? I, I would not be happy leaving this podcast today seeing Blue Period and worse than Free Run in my heart. Okay, so you're up for a nomination, and I have the veto in my back pocket, just remember that. I came out, I came into this podcast with a pure heart, Rob. I wasn't here to, to hurt you. <laughs> and now I really <laughs> can't. I can't do much of anything. <laughs> um, I'd like to propose Shirokumo Cafe in the Gash Bell tier. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing this just so that I'll veto it? Because no. that's 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 rude, Justin. <laughs> that would be pretty legendary. Um, <laughs> no, I'd, I'd put Shirokuma Cafe in worse than Free Rent. I've only seen about five episodes, but I just don't think it reaches the heights. It could. There's 43 episodes left to go. But Panda doing nothing and Shirokuma having puns and Penguin being George Costanza, I don't think that tops Free Rent. I will say, uh, Polar Bear Cafe is actually one of the first anime I ever watched that wasn't like you know your basic battle shonen or pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's i i think it might be the reason why i love slice of life manga and anime so much 10 15 years later after originally watching it so it does hold a very special place in my heart for that but it it it's a very very slow burn anime and it, <laughs> it is kind of made for younger a younger audience in order to learn you know about japanese puns and idioms and culture and I do enjoy learning about that too, but I don't think it's... It's certainly not hitting those highs of Free Run and those emotional, impactful moments that Free Run brings us. So I, I think it's fair to put it worse than Free Run, of course. On your on your all-time list, do you think it's higher? Than Free Run? No, no. Okay. I, I think that... I just want to make a quick analogy, and maybe this, this resonates with some people. I th I'm thinking like the NBA, and you have a person who's had an MVP season last season, let's say someone like Joel Embiid, um, who was like extremely dominant, but he might not even make the top 75 team at this point in his career. If he retired today, he's not there, even though he was unbelievably great. And then you have someone like John Stockton, who's like never made an MVP, but still might rank higher because of the longevity, the consistency, um, long time greatness versus like one, one time peak. Does that make sense? I don't think that analogy works for this. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, I, think, I think maybe it's we were in is LeBron James and Polar Bear Cafe is Jalen Brunson. Obviously, LeBron is better, <laughs> but I like Jalen Brunson more. 
<laughs> sure. I, that was not specific to Polar Bear Cafe. That's just this entire exercise of um, free run. There's been no bad part of free run yet because it's so early, but we've seen the lumps that some of these other animes have taken. But as a whole, holistically, uh, it still might be greater because of the length and the duration of it. That that analogy was atrocious, Justin. <laughs> That's a great analogy. It did not work here. <laughs> it totally works. But go on, please. Uh, I want to talk about... Okay, I know this is better than Free Run. It's Kiki's Delivery Service. You, you know that this is my favorite. Not I don't think it's better than Free Run. Time. That's fine, you don't have a veto. It's my favorite movie of all time. One of my favorite animes of all time. It's... It just holds a very special place in my heart. Uh, it's it's one hundred percent better than Free Run, and it's, Vito it's it not. if you can. Oh wait, you can't. Too bad. It is. It, I think you can use your veto if you'd like to. I'm not gonna veto myself. <laughs> no, you can. You can veto just because you propose it. Does the proposer have the final, the initial say, and then the other person gets the veto? I thought it's the discussion. Yeah. No, 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 we're having no, no, a discussion, no. and then we decide where it goes, and then you can veto if you don't want to have this discussion. It really doesn't matter because it's going there no matter what. I mean, I guess you can use your veto, but I just think that a girl who can barely fly versus Freerun who has infinite magical powers, uh, there's no argument there. Not only there's... that, I mean, F Fern's better at magic than her. Uh, the magic, who just... cares how good they are at magic? That has nothing to do with anything. I mean, Kiki just kind of is not good. You're not going to sit here and tell me that Kiki's Delivery Service is a bad movie. K Kiki's Delivery Service might be like my seventh favorite Ghibli movie, and I'm not even joking. That's outrageous. I, It's going in better than Free Raven. I don't know. That's I, it. I, I, personally, yeah, I, it's I definitely worse I see than what you're Raven. trying to do. I hear it in your voice. The problem is you're not very good at trolling and acting and pretending like, ooh, I think this is a terrible anime. And I, I, I know actually, how much Rob likes it. No, no, I genuinely believe it's. Well, I have a shit eating grin on my face because I am. I have a shit eating grin on my face, but I genuinely do think it's worse than Free Run. And I, I'm not kidding when I say it's. It's not in my top five Ghibli movies of all time. I didn't enjoy it when I saw it. And I've seen it twice, I believe. Um, I don't think it's a bad movie. I just don't think it's a great movie. I know how much you love it. I, I'm, I'm floored right now. It has one of Ghibli's best scores, the best setting. It's so cozy and just inspiring watching Kiki struggle throughout to try to be what everybody thinks she should be and then reinvigorating that passion because she finds if, a if reason If I want to watch a struggle, I'll just try to watch you make a jump shot. <laughs> okay, you know, <laughs> your basketball analogies, once again, are not on point. And Kiki is, uh, Kiki is absolutely better than Free Run. I don't know, man. I think we might need to pause that one. Just veto it then. I, I'll use my veto. I don't even care. If you're going to pull that garbage, then it is what it is. I, I, uh, an unbelievable performance on your hand right here. The, the, you should be embarrassed for the way you're treating this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to get rid of A Place Further Than The Universe. And it's a sad cut to put it worse than Freer and I think it is. No, I. This was one where going back to my holistic, you know, approach to these things. I think Free Run is a better overall anime than A Place Further Than the Universe. Actually, I don't even know that I think that. I think that that's actually not may, might not even be true. I think the thing that A Place Further Than the Universe did better than Free Run is that they both had an emotional impact on me. Mm -hmm. In terms of obviously free run, you know, even just that first episode really makes you want to appreciate the people in your life and, and you know, understand that your perception is different than somebody else's. Like, just because for her 10 years feels like nothing doesn't mean that for somebody else it isn't, you know, the highlight of their entire life. But I almost feel like, you know, that didn't change me too much because I feel at this point in my life, I already do appreciate the people in my life. Whereas A Place Further Than the Universe, when I watched it, it, it really did make me feel inspired to kind of pick myself up and start following some of my dreams. You know, that, that anime starts with a girl that is so stuck in what she's doing and that what she's doing is nothing. And, and she finds this, you know, her friend that 
is so inspired and has such a reason to go to Antarctica to find, you know, her mother or get closure for the loss of her mother. And, you know, she's just constantly taking these leaps and and doing things she would never do. And she starts to follow her dream. And I think I think that had more of an actual impact on me than Free Rin, whereas Free Rin, I did get that message and it did make me feel emotional. But I, I do feel like at just the point of my life that I watched it, I already you know feel like I appreciate the people in my life. I think everything you're saying makes sense. <laughs> it's hard. I think Free Rin's just a better production. I think it's a better story. I think A Place Further Than the Universe is like a tight little vignette. And I think that A Place Further Than the Universe has a really strong opening and a really strong closing. I think the middle episodes are kind of forgettable. I also think that the two supporting characters that aren't the two main girls also kind of, I don't want to say they take away, but they don't really add to the story as much. I, I, I totally get the feeling like it's it's the type of the energy that like kind of pumps you up like, oh man, I want to start living. I think both of these series do that and they do both tug emotionally. I didn't think you were going to be that high on this. So this is by no means an attack on you. We can put it in better than free rent if you're feeling super strongly, but I'd also consider shelving it for now to see where, for me, it's a border series. Do, would you agree? Or I think, think if it's, it's a border finish? series and I think looking at what we have left, I think it should be better than free rent. Oh, it's not a border series for me. I think it's a border series based on our differing opinions. I know that. I'm, And what I'm saying is that based on what we have left, I think better than free run is where it should end up. Okay. We can put it there if you're, if you're feeling comfortable locking it in. I do feel very comfortable locking it in. Okay. This came out in what, 2017, 2018? And I, I still have these very positive feelings towards it. Whereas some older anime that in the moment I have that recency bias, it fades away, but it has not faded away for me with this series. This is going to be a tight race to the finish, I think. I'm, I'm looking at sure the numbers. Okay. Go ahead. It's your cut. Oh, it is mine. Okay. Um. Uh. I like Dr. Stone. It's, it's a series that starts off a lot of fun and seeing them spend like three or four episodes just working on reinventing something so simple is, is really cool. But as Dr. Stone progresses, it progresses. Things get way too fast, and it sort of takes away the fun of discovery and learning. And, uh, you know, it, it it does make sense. Like, in the aspects of real history, you have so much time, 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 where nothing's going on. And then all of a sudden, Industrial Revolution, 100 years, technology booms. And, you know, that's real life. Emulating it in the manga wasn't as enjoyable for me. I, I totally agree. I, I honestly threw Dr. Stone in here as an anime that I knew that we both felt good, not great about. And I felt like we had a lot of competitive series in here. I was like, I better put some stuff in the worst than Freerun bucket in order to make sure that we're not just killing some really precious darlings. Um, so that was a that was a coward's play on my part. But yeah, this is definitely <laughs> worse than Freerun. Yeah, had to be done. Let's go Your Name is Better Than Freerun. Yeah, I, I don't think that's really an argument um you know we always tell the story i'm I'm sure we've talked about it multiple times in multiple (laughs) podcasts that the first time i saw you watching it was when we were in japan on the bullet train and you were sitting there silence in silence on your computer watching this movie and you know right then and there i could see how floored and touched you were by it and then i eventually watched it when we got home from japan and 100 percent, i felt the same way Yeah, just one of the most beautiful, breathtaking visual soundtracks. Yeah, it's it's a special movie. I I can see some of the flaws with it in hindsight, but the experience and going in with having no knowledge of what it is, is really, it's magical is the only word I can use to describe it. Speaking of magical, Justin, I think it's time we talked about Little Witch Academia. (laughs) What is there to talk about? This is like... (laughs) The second worst witch series on this list, and it's <laughs> both of them are worse than Free Rin. I blew through this series when it was on Netflix. I think I watched like all 40 or whatever episodes there were. In There's 40? Seven, 17 minutes. No, there, there might have been like 24 <laughs> episodes, but like I flew through it. And from episode one to episode 24, she's still an awful witch. She never actually <laughs> learns how to do any magic, honestly. But uh, it's it's a really fun 
cute, great animation. It's obviously not better than Free Red, but it does hold a special place in my heart. And I know you hate it, so it never had a chance. In this. <laughs> you know, I don't hate it. I never finished it. It's just boring. Like, I, I wish I liked it because it's like zany and cute, but it's like, it's just like antics. It's, it, it does K-On badly. That's not a great okay, comparison. No, no, no. It, does, it does not do K-On badly. Aka was a great main character. She's a doofus and she's like so kawaii, but let, let's not get into this. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not trying to like throw shade. I just like, for some reason, there's something about the show that even though like Trigger animated it, it's beautiful to look at. It just wasn't fun for me, even though that's what it's exactly trying to be. Well, you're a boring, miserable person. It's true. Uh, I can't argue with that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so it's worse there than you are. That's why you resonate with Free Rin so much. <laughs> Free Rin's she has no excellent. personality. She's just a yeah, miserable, I... flat. I you no no. I'm not getting. I'm not <laughs> getting angry yeah, talk, and talk, taking talk it out on Free about... What am I doing? Take more here? shit no, out no, no, Free Rin. Yeah, I love Free Rin. God, you, this is what you do to me. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do it to you again? <laughs> yeah. What do you got here? I think Kaiji's worse than Free Rin, and I know you disagree. Ah. Uh... I knew this was going to be a big fight. Um, this isn't. This I isn't think, a big fight. No, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight it hard. I knew you weren't going to feel the same way as me with Kaiji, and I, I think I'm probably going to deflect to you on this one. Kaiji, I think, is the ultimate experience uh, experience of watching this sure. anime. And I don't think if I was watching Kaiji without talking to anybody else or watching it with other people, I wouldn't enjoy Kaiji as much as I did. You know, it, Kaiji is something we still quote today. Zawa, Anytime there's like, Zawa. there's dead air, it's just Zawa, Zawa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's hilarious. It's the It's an most, endless ejaculation. It, it, yeah, it really is. It keeps you on the edge of your seat and it's constantly edging you throughout, seeing how badly this man can destroy his life with gambling. And it's it's... I don't even know if it's supposed to be funny, but it is hilarious and a joy to watch with other people. I, it, when I said it, this isn't going to be like a big fight, because I don't feel so strongly that it's worse than Free Rent. Like I could make the argument that it's better than Free Rent. And this is this is where I struggle sometimes, because I love Free Rent. One of the best series I've seen in the last five years, let's say. Um, but when I look back in 10 years from now, assuming that I've never seen any more Free Rent, what part of it will I remember? even though I enjoyed it week to week. And I, when I think of it, I have good feelings. But what parts of it will I remember? Kaiji, there's going to be so many vivid memories for me. I remember the rock, paper, scissors. I remember going against the, the glass uh, the glass staircase. Uh, I remember E-Card. There's so many vivid memories where I could see the argument for better than free rent if you're feeling strongly. Um, it's just we have four spots left for each of them if that's one of the ones you want to use. You see, that's that's what's tough, too, is that, uh, just like you said, in 10 years, what am I going to remember of Free Rain? And I think it's mostly episode one. I think it's mostly the start to that series that really hooked me in and grasped me and made me feel things. And as it goes on, as much as I love the last half of it, it kind of just turns into this battle shown in for, like, half of its run, which is a lot of fun, but it's not necessarily as impactful. I really do think, I, I repeat what I say earlier, which is I think it's going to be a tight race at the finish, um, unless you have extremely differing feelings than I do about some of these things. You know, talking about it, I, I think I think I'd want to put Kaiji in better then. I could put it there. I'm not sure if I'm ready to lock in. Are you ready to lock in? I what's, what's think something I'm that ready you're not to lock feeling in. great about? Okay. As, as in something that I'm pretty comfortable putting in worse? is Jojo Part 3. Yes. That is the easiest cut left on the board. I think the rest of them I are going to be... Agree. Uh, I think the rest of these cuts are going to be really hard, frankly. 100% agree. Uh, Jojo Part 3, it's a lot of fun for like six or seven of, it, of its episodes, and the rest are kind of meandering and boring and feel like filler. It's a great Monster of the Week anime when it... You know, when it was written as the manga 30 years ago, but without its production value and its, you know, great voice acting and great character designs and awesome stand powers, I don't think it, it's actually that enjoyable to watch a lot of its episodes. I think without 
some of the early episodes, the Darby brothers, and the final fight. I think I think that leaves about sixty to seventy percent of the series, which is borderline unrewatchable. Agreed. I one hundred percent agree. Iconic characters, iconic, iconic series. Absolutely. Not gonna argue that, but it's worse than free for sure. Do you honestly see three series that you'd feel comfortable putting in worse than free at this point? Not necessarily comfortable, but I have the three in my mind that I, I would have, put worse. I think we have absolutely opposite opinions on some of these two, which is why it's going to get funky. I'll, right. I'll say it. I'll say the one that I think you're going to go after, and I'm going to say Naruto is better than Freerun. It's not. That is, that is an outrageous statement to make. That is such... You see, here's the problem. Naruto is awful. <laughs> as a complete package because 33% of the series is unreadable. I dropped it once they got to that war arc and that war arc took years and I and that's that's one third of the whole series. Then you go back to part one which is I think the best part of Naruto and you have the tuning exam which is great but doesn't actually finish and you have Sasuke Retrieval which is probably the best arc of Naruto and early Shippuden I do enjoy and then everything else is like bleh. I think, I think that your mind has been toxicified over the years with people around us saying how much they dislike Naruto and how bad it is that you forget the feeling of 13-year-old Robert waiting for the latest scanlation to come out for every single week for about five years. I think you forget the hype of Rock Lee dropping the weights to kick Gara in the face. I, for, I think you forget Jiraiya fighting pain and dying and leaving his final message. These are all, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. That final war arc is horrible. That leaves us with about 450 chapters or 100 or 200 episodes that are still either good, very good, or amazing, iconic. This series made me buy bootleg Chinese CDs because our friend would not give me the, the scanlations or the, the episodes because he's an asshole. As much as I have problems with Naruto, and there are tons of problems, I think that this is one of the series that it's not like a definitive better than Free Run. It's like this is this is hard for this 28 episode season for it to overpower something that is just such an iconic part of my life and childhood. Look, I think Naruto more than any other series here, even Dragon Ball, is the series that encompasses our childhood. Truthfully, I I, I think it is that impactful and has been that everlasting in our lives even more than Dragon Ball even more than Pokemon even more than Yu-Gi-Oh I, I think Naruto was really our first real anime and I get that I, I appreciate that but when you have such a large portion of this series that is for me wasn't even readable or watchable I, that, that just says so much I don't know if it does because it, it's greatness for a huge portion and like it's like looking at Freerun and being like we don't know what remains to be seen they this is like if we stop Naruto in the beginning um the, after the first two or three seasons and it's like oh this this stuff's fire this is like top five of all time Freerun hasn't had time to get bad yet not that it okay, will that's why we put Soma that's why we put Soma as worse than Freerun but Naruto is better than package, Soma it, not for me I don't think that's the case Naruto is iconic. I get Naruto is iconic, but we're not talking about how iconic it is. We're talking about how good it is, and 40% of it is atrocious. It's not just iconic. I'm not saying iconic as like an anime. I'm saying iconic for us. I, I don't disagree with that. I I just... I think this is a spite <sighs> pick. I think I think you're standing on this ground out of spite. And I, I had to get rid of your veto, because I knew from the very beginning, this is the series you wanted to murder. But you know, you, I think the thing that bothers me is that I didn't, I didn't do Blue Period in you know bad in bad taste. I I did it because it genuinely for me was worse than Free Run, and I feel like you chose Kiki just to be a jerk and to be like really nasty about it. And, <laughs> you know, right now I would have used my veto if you weren't. You know, that's you know, how I I'm, feel about Kiki though. It's genuine. I had to cancel you out, but that's I, I, Kiki's not in my top fifty best anime of all time. That's how I feel. I, Naruto's not mine. You don't think Naruto's in your top 50? I think that's horseshit. So much of it is garbage. I, I agree. 30 to 40% is garbage, but the peaks are immaculate. Uh, Jiraiya's death really, really did have 
quite an, quite an effect on me. Does I do believe when it made it. Go ahead. <laughs> when we were in, I guess I must have been like ninth or tenth grade when it happened. Might have when maybe we were even younger. And like on Facebook, you could make like artistic drawings. And when Jiraiya died for me, you made like this really beautifully drawn, like Microsoft Paint tombstone for Jiraiya with like Jiraiya crying at it. It was something like that. And it, it uh, even all these years later, still I think about it. I have not thought about that in over 15 years. And I remember it's the graffiti app. I, I have not thought about that in like 15 years though, Rob. Um, I can't believe Facebook uh, used to have apps. And we, and we would use them. <laughs> you have to download it and customize your, your Facebook wall with which apps you want to put on it. But God, we digress. Boomers. <laughs> Rob, I, I'm really, I'm shocked, but not shocked by how low you rate Naruto. Like, where do you honestly think Naruto ranks amongst no, your favorite anime I know I said it's time? not in my top 50. I know I said it's not in my top 50, but I didn't mean that. I was just hurt <laughs> by what you did to Kiki. And I, I would say probably top 30. Yeah, I think that's a fair place for it. I think like top 30, top 40. And I think, hold off on this, but I'd like you to think about where your rank for Freerun is at the end of this as well. I think for I me, think... Freerun's probably top 15, top 10. Okay, there there goes the hold off on it, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's it's like half as good as, or Naruto's half as good as Freebird for me. I don't think that's how rankings work, Rob. I don't know. You're the math guy, not me. <laughs> I can I can see the argument. I just think that, like, when you, again, when you think back 20 years from now, like, what of Freebird are you going to remember? And what of Naruto are you going to remember? And I think Naruto leaves a lot of sour notes. But it also leaves just like really special moments. I think, um, like, like I think the what manifesting... I'm gonna remember of Naruto, Justin, is me watching it in eight minutes, eight minute increments in 120p on YouTube. Do you think you would have done that for free run? As a 13 year old? No, probably not, because I, I think I've been too stupid and emotionally no. immature to appreciate free run. Yeah, but I Naruto is made for brain dead kids. It totally is. It absolutely is. <laughs> I'm not arguing any of these things. Naruto, Naruto's taking his lumps. Uh, it, it's got some problems, but I'm not ready to to put it in worse than Free Rin. Um, and I, I'm willing to to shelve the discussion, and get rid of a few more of these, where it could be our last cut if it has to go there. But I don't, I don't feel great about it. Can I offer you a trade then? Uh huh. If you're gonna put Naruto in better than, then I get to have one that 100% goes in better than as well of what's remaining. It's Yotsuba. It's Yotsuba. It's absolutely Yotsuba. Yeah, I'll it's take it. It's not even a contest that it's Yotsuba. Yotsuba, yeah, I think, is probably the greatest slice of life manga or anime ever created. And it is a simple series about a simple little girl and her hilarious innocence and the way she sees the world. And it's been running for 25 years and it never misses. It's just, it's it's so perfect and i don't know how a 50 year old japanese man is so good at writing <laughs> a six-year-old child it, it's truly mind-blowing to me is she six yet i think she still might be five 15 years later yeah well whatever she is <laughs> um yeah I'll, I'll take that gamble which only leaves us with one spot left in better than um but uh, if if i'm being honest those are both series that could go better or worse than free run for me Yotsuba probably go worse, but not by not by like a significant margin. Freerun is such a a fluid thing at this neophyte stage of its career that it could be it could really go like since you've already shared your rank, it could go anywhere from as high as ten to as low as about I'd say like high twenties for me. Mm. Like it's got like a I, fifteen I to twenty fair. foot range. So that puts Naruto and Yotsuba into better than. That leaves us with five series being Borgoroso, Dragon Ball, just Dragon Ball, Bakuman, Ping Pong, and Gash Bell. Three of which must go in worse than Freerun, one of which must go in better than Freerun, and one of which must go in the Gash Bell tier. I think I'm ready to put Gash Bell in Gash Bell tier, Justin. You think it's time? <laughs> I think it's time to put Gash Bell in Gash Bell tier so that we can really get into the meat of this. Okay. I don't think... I think we need to start doing worse. Let's do worse. Well, we got to talk about Gashville a little bit first, right? I mean, it has oh, do we? reason. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please, please. Look, I, I don't think our love 
and passion for anime exists in the same way where we're still like three or four years later making these fun podcasts and having a good time if not for Gashbell. I, th I think Gashbell is just the most fun we've had with anime. It somehow has a brand new manga continuation which is been a blast the last two years you and i are always waiting with bells on every month for the new chapter to talk about it and having so much fun with that waiting it's with just bells on such... huh uh, yeah <laughs> gash bell <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's it's special to us and i i think it is the anime that best represents our friendship and all of those important things that go into who we are as as uh you know anime anime people you, you know what's so funny about gash bell is that sometimes i question how much i really like gash bell and how much of it is just stockholm syndrome from you and our friend kevin repeatedly saying how great it is and you being stockholm syndrome by kevin and then we all just have this like inner circle of just repeating it to each other an echo chamber if you will <laughs> and then in our heads it's like oh yeah this is the greatest thing of all time but just because one of us started the chain and whether or not we've ever had like a conscious thought to think about it and then i'll watch an episode and i'll be like no yeah that's a valid thought even if i was brainwashed yeah, <laughs> yeah i i think there's very high possibility that we are brainwashed and this is a very intense stockholm syndrome situation but i will never admit that to myself where do you think Gash Bell ranks in your in your all time rankings? I think it's number one. I, I think it's it's number one, and then something else gets to be number one because Gash Bell is not even on the list. It's just so beyond <laughs> number zero the ability to be ranked. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's like anywhere from two to four for me, but typically it ranks out at two when I make my list. Which, right. which doesn't make sense. This little stupid... Okay, this is the Free Room Podcast. I'm sorry. Let's get back on track. Uh, we could have the <laughs> Top 100 Anime of All Time podcast a different day. I think we got to one by one eliminate the worst thens. And then that okay. will shake out where we have two left, one for worse, one for better. Okay, so we're going to start with worse, though. Oh, uh, I'm going to... I got to go with Ping Pong. Oh no, that's the one that's better for me. No, nah, I got I gotta go with ping pong. Can we get I rid just... of something in the middle first? Because ping pong is the highest on this list for me of the remaining between Dragon Ball, Bakuman, Porco. I'm I will get rid of Bakuman because I do love Bakuman and I think it's it's an incredible manga and one of the best manga I've ever read and just the insight we get into Shonen Jump and creating manga is is such a fascinating um experience but it is incredibly text heavy and incredibly slow at times and it has by far the worst romance i've ever ever read watched seen heard in any piece of media ever that bad romance might legitimately raise bakuman's rank by 10 though if it had a good romance of it might be like in the top 50 because it has such a bad romance, it's at least in the top 40 for me. Just how hilariously, impressively bad it is, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the other thing that takes away from it is my favorite character is the otter guy, who's maybe like the sixth most important character. I think the duo pair, I do like, I think his name's Akagi, the glasses character. I don't like mm -hmm. um, Ma Mahito or whatever the, the main character is that much. But it, it's uh, yeah, a very special a very series. frustrating character, absolutely. Yeah, but love the it, series. It is an incredible manga, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you this for the next four picks. Does Free Run legitimately rank higher than Bakuman on your list? It does yeah, for me, I think. It does. Okay. It, it does for me as well. I, I think just overall as the experience, you know, Free Run is more fun to engage with. It's, you know, incredible in the things it makes us feel. And Bakuman never made me really feel anything. Bakuman was honestly for me like reading a book. And just learning about a, a, you know, a part of Japanese culture that you know we're unfamiliar with, that being the manga industry. But it's also obviously a shonen manga, so not all that stuff is true. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. It's not it's not hitting the emotional beats, but it's fascinating and hilarious. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, Rob, I'm I'm gonna say this, and I don't know if you're gonna disagree with me or not, but I'm thinking Dragon Ball is worse than Free Run. <sighs> I love Dragon I Ball. Go I, I love early tournament arcs. Um, I, I just don't 
from my my experience with Dragon Ball is very different than most American boys our age, in that I, it doesn't tug at the heartstrings for me as much as I I love the Tenkaichi's, uh, his fight against the Red Ribbon Army. It, it just doesn't just it doesn't hit in the heart. May, the same. may I counter it with something that I think will really put it over the edge for you? Is it Ran Fan's armpits? It's Ran Fan's armpits. <laughs> Is, is Dragon Ball your better than pick right now? I think it, I think it was, but I is it I not Porco? I think it. I think like in my heart it's Porco. I think in my head it was Dragon Ball, but in my heart it's Porco. I can I can compromise with you on Porco, because I don't know if that's uh, both of us settling for the middle pick here. And I'm okay with I it. think Dragon Ball, I think putting Dragon Ball in better than would be us settling. And I think Porco is in my heart where I want to, what I want to go with in better than. Why don't you give a eulogy to Dragon Ball? I'll give a eulogy to Ping Pong, and then we'll both talk about Porco. That's perfect. Um, I don't know if eulogy is the best word to use with Dragon Ball. Just a Ooh, couple months sorry. after Kira Toriyama's <laughs> death, and, and we're going here and dumping it in worse than free run, but like, it is fantastic. Fantastic. It has three of my favorite tournament arcs in any series mixed in with like a great Piccolo arc where things get really serious and we were able to move on from being like this hilarious gag manga and with these cool powers and cool weird characters and actually having some impactful drama in it and it, it, it that's something that I don't think we get in Dragon Ball Z. I think that's something Dragon Ball does better is the tension um to mixed in with the comedy and you know it, it is there's a reason it is one of the most popular series of all time but for me as a package free run just is so much more cohesive and has such better pacing and you know dragon ball is a product of its time the animation is not great watching it now i just a few weeks ago watched um one of the tournament arcs and while well, it's it's fun to watch it's it's it doesn't look great. <laughs> I'll also say on that same front, I don't think the manga holds up nearly as well either. Uh, very, very inappropriate at times. I think, I don't know if we talked about this on recording or not, but like first episode or first chapter, like Bulma pees herself when tied up to a, like a cliff. Uh, another one where she has no panties on and then she flashes Master Roshi. Part of it's like, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be funny or if it's just really kind of it borderlines on gross for me. And I don't know if that's because I'm a stiff or if it's just like, this is definitely a product of the time. So I'm not holding I, it I against say, you. I think it's a, a very juvenile product of its time. That yeah. It just doesn't really work in the current landscape. And, you know, I don't think I even enjoyed it when I watched it when we were younger. I, I think I kind of just like didn't think anything of it but like now re-watching it or rereading it it's just like yeah <laughs> the anime wasn't as risque like they they censored a lot of that stuff out so we never got any of that right um right. um so it was cleaner but yeah I, I love dragon ball i understand its importance to the history but in terms of our personal rankings i i put it below and i think we'll we'll agree on that i will talk about ping pong I don't think there's a single series in all of anime that's anything like ping pong. I think the animation style, when you first look at it, one of the ugliest things you've ever seen. The more you watch it though, the more beautiful it becomes, the more you come to admire it. And I think it's also very similar to a series like Free Rin or um, A Place Further Than the Universe that it's, it's a series about people. It's not a series about power levels or creating uh, some sort of I have to win this dynamic. It's not a competition. It's it's underneath all of that. It's just about what makes you happy and what it means to be human. And I think it's really special in that way. Blood tastes like iron, Justin. Blood does taste like iron. Hiro Kenzen. Hiro Kenzen. <laughs> Look, I I don't I don't hate ping pong. It's just like for me that weird art style just it, I could never look past it and I know that's something that like I should appreciate about it so it's so unique and it, it's so like different and and it in that like 
weird rigidness. It's also just very snappy and and it, it works that art style really well and and it works into it. But for me, I just uh, it it doesn't work for me. I just can't get into it. I'm okay with it being the last cut of Worse Than Free Run. Rob, why don't why don't you take us off with Porco Rosso? Ah, si, Justin, si, Signore Porco Rosso. Ah, si. Pla, pla, dove. My Italian <laughs> is not great, let's be honest. Yours is better than mine, even though I'm the Italian one and you're the Chinese one. But I was, I was, I was I, leafing I, through some old, uh, some old treasures of mine, uh, and I found a pamphlet. Italian Honor Society, Justin, uh, Rob's name, nowhere to be found. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, porco rosso. Una porco on a plano. <laughs> Yikes. This is not good. Look, I think porco rosso for both of us was not even on our radar of being something we loved until we saw it um, last summer in the movie theaters together when, you know, Ghibli re releases their movies in the movie theaters and it, it's seeing it on the big screen seeing it with justin like it's it's a it's a man's movie it's just like it's it's it a really movie is. made for like dumb guys just wanting to watch something like dumb and actiony and like i don't know it's just a fun movie it, it it's exactly what you're saying but it's not at the same time like it's absolutely a man's movie but it has so much heart it's not like it's not like the Expendables with Terry Crews and Sylvester mm -hmm. Stallone. It's it's that on the surface, and then it's just got like a heart of gold underneath it all. Oh, which absolutely, makes it absolutely super special. It does have those extra layers that that make it so much more. I don't know, poignant. You have those aspects of him becoming the pig over that survivor's guilt. That's it's it's subtle, and you know you might not even realize it on that first watch through. But like there there are undertones of what Porco is going through and what he's trying to overcome. And in the end, you you know, you do see a glimpse of him becoming human and finally, you know, being the person he always was. And he's also voiced by Michael Keaton. <laughs> well, what is the movie about again? <laughs> it is an Italian pig that flies planes that is voiced by Michael Keaton. There what we go. What more could you want? <laughs> Rob... Before we wrap this up, name one of your favorite scenes from Porco Rosso. I, 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 my, my favorite scene is when the like massive gang of these old widowed Italian women are coming into <laughs> the Piccolo shop and showing Porco like we know what we're doing. We're building this plane, buddy. Yeah, they're just they're just taking all of his hard earned cash, and uh, he's in debt, and he can't control these old nonas. The nonas are too powerful. It's too funny. I, I gotta say, my scene of choice for today, it could change any time, but it's definitely the, the final fist fight where they totally forget about the competition and they're just walloping each other in the middle of the ocean. Um, and it's just nonsensical, but it's also, it's like Looney Tunes, hilarious. Um, that will always stick in my memory. Absolutely. And once again, we ended on this. The fact that we got to see it together in the movie theaters was such a pleasant positive experience that i will never forget absolutely rob i'm gonna summarize this whole list and then we're, let's just reflect for a moment and see how we feel about this uh again in case you forgot this this episode was about is this better than free run because we spent so much time talking about every series that wasn't free run um <laughs> in our four tiers the first tier being the gash bell tier is konjiki no gash bell better than free run we have yu hakusho blue period Kiki's Delivery Service, A Place Further Than the Universe, Your Name, Kaiji, Yotsuba, Naruto, and Porco Rosso. Worse than Free Rin. Some of these, or most of these, just slightly. I'll go with the slightly ones first, in my opinion. Uh, Food Wars, Bakuman, Dragon Ball, and Ping Pong are probably my four picks for just barely not making the cut. If we had a different random assortment of anime, they probably could go above in some days. Um, and then the other ones that are below are... Kaon, Polar Bear Cafe, Dr. Stone, uh, Little Witch Academia, JoJo Part 3. And then Absolute Trash, I'm not even going to say, because it's Absolute Trash. I'll say it, it's Girls Between Panzer. It is Absolute <laughs> Trash. Rob, how are you feeling about this list overall? And if this was your list, what would you change? 
I think the biggest change would Naruto would be dumped and maybe either Food Wars or Bakuman moving up. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy overall. You take Food Wars and Bakuman over Dragon Ball, though, because let's say you got rid of Blue Period as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, I, I think so. I, I think for all the things we stated, especially if like with Naruto, you know, we we said we kind of agreed forty percent of it was terrible, which is the case with Food Wars too. You know, if I we can look past that, I think that's what I would do. Yeah, I think I'd probably cut, and this is not. A uh, slight on you, but of these, I I'd know. probably drop Kiki for ping pong, and then maybe, maybe a place further than the universe for. I'd say Bakuman over Soma. I think Soma is the one that's on the border that doesn't make the cut. I think that's fair. But otherwise, well, we we did a pretty good job of compromising here. I think we did pretty good, Rob, and I, I hope that. Uh, I hope this was a fun surprise for you. Maybe you expected a 30-minute short episode, but I gave you an hour-long YouTube episode. <laughs> Things got crazy. <laughs> Things got crazy. Thanks, Rob. <laughs>